So the Microsoft Power Platform, Power Apps in particular, accomplishes something incredible. It allows for people like me to jump into something like application development, which normally would be untouchable to someone without a computer science background. It allows you to have full control of your applications without having to reach out to a third party and keep up communication for maybe weeks or months. You can make updates in live time. There's so many wonderful things it accomplishes, and it's so close to being perfect, but there's one major flaw in Microsoft's little system here, all right? It still requires me to do work, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you my little way around it. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Perez, and today I'm going to be showing you how Copilot, Microsoft's new little assistant for everything, I'd be shocked if you hadn't heard about it by now, can help you build out a power app from the ground up. What we're going to do here is if you could just join me on make.powerapps.com, it is pretty much impossible to miss. It's pretty, it's asking, it's begging you to use it. All right. So Copilot, Microsoft's brand new AI, which I like to refer to as just Clippy 2.0, right? It's a helpful little assistant utilizing ChatGPT in the background to be able to uh, just help you with individual things throughout the Power Platform and through some other Microsoft products as well. And here we see it's just begging us, let's build an app, what should it do? So I'm gonna put myself in a little scenario here. Let's say, uh, I have a little bit of a logistics background, all right, a little bit, so some logistics guy may come down on me for some of the terms that I might change, uh, but, uh, Let's see. So let's say I am in charge now of my own very small 3PL. 3PL being a third party logistics company, which means I handle the transportation of goods for uh, other companies that are out there, right? So I probably started up maybe with my own truck, maybe with a couple of other trucks. I want to be able to create an app that's going to allow me to keep track of my trucks, my drivers, and whatever contracts I have currently. So right here on the front page, let's build an app. What should it do? This is where you're going to give Copilot your little starting prompt here. Now, there is sort of a character limit. So you're going to want to be a very concise, but also very specific at the same time. I know it's a little bit contradictory, but don't worry. This isn't the only time that you're going to be able to talk to your new little assistant here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see. What should it do? I want an app that can create an app. Let's just tell it. Let's give it an order, create an app that allows me as a third party logistics company to, let's see, like I said, you wanna be concise but specific, to keep track of my trucks, my drivers, and my current contracts. There we go. That is a good starting point for now. So let's go ahead and enter this in and see what we get. So once you go ahead and click go there, it's going to start setting up your app, starting with the data model. Okay. Now Copilot and Power Apps immediately starts building out a, your data model in Dataverse. All right. Now there are several different data connectors, different kinds of database for right now. Uh, Copilot and Power Apps is only able to build from Dataverse. All right. But you'll see there's some other places that you can utilize Copilot where you don't necessarily have to do that. It just doesn't have the built-in capability to be able to build from an external source of data. But as we can see, there we go. It's gone ahead and built out a little data model here in Microsoft's new uh, table designer, I think it's called. So this will be a fun little question for everybody. How do you feel? If you've used Power Apps for a while, how do you feel about this new uh, table designer Microsoft has put out? As you can see, it's created me a table for my trucks, a table for my contracts and a table for my driver. I can go ahead and click these little three dots next to these tables and I can view the actual data that's sitting inside. Now, this is just some sample data. It doesn't have to be the data that you're actually going to utilize. So here we've got the contract. The contract table has the name of the contract, the start date, and it looks like it has a lookup column to the truck that's going to be carrying that contract out. So wonderful there, uh, but it's kind of limited in the data. So do I have to go back out? and create a whole new prompt again? Nope, no worries. Let's go ahead. And uh, as you can see, Copilot has sort of popped up in our little side pane here. So it's going to be our assistant throughout the entire creation of this app and the uh, data underneath it. So let's go ahead and give it a command. I want some more stuff on this contract table. All right. So first off, I would love to know how much we're making from this contract. Well, let's go ahead and give it an order. All right. Let's give it a prompt and say, uh, let's add rate 
column to the contract table to tell us how much each is worth. All right, give it a second to work on it. Boom, there we go. It's created a rate column, it's a currency column, and it's already put in some sample data for us. Now, these rates are extraordinarily high. I don't know if all of these contracts are cross country. For a start, it is very, very good. Okay, let's go ahead, have a look at our truck table and see what other kinds of things we can do, right? So our trucks have a look up to the driver for each of the trucks. All right, awesome. It has the capacity, it has the truck name. All right, this would be a really, really dumb idea. But just to show you what Copilot can do, uh, get rid of the capacity column in the truck table. Boom. And our capacity column is gone. All right, now that was a pretty important thing to keep track of for your trucks. But this is just to show you that Copilot can just take your natural language and very easily figure out exactly what you want it to do. All right, let's see uh, for the driver table. Let's go ahead and make some changes here. Okay, driver name and license number. All right, this is going to be a silly thing to ask it. But let's go ahead and add a social security number column to the driver table just to show that it can do this again. There we go. Okay, let's hope that's not anybody's actual social security number. I'm gonna probably go ahead and delete that column anyway, just in case, but just to show you it can do that. And uh, if that got blurred out, then yes, those were in the exact format a social security number would be. All right, let's see. What other things can we do here? All right, so clearly we can add columns. We can uh, remove columns. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, this license number column, what if we just renamed it? All right, rename the license number column to driver's license. That should be something it can do pretty easily. Boom, that column has now been renamed. So you can get really, really into the minutia. And if you want to, let's say, play around with the data here, let's go ahead and let's say I want like 10 more rows of data. All right, so add 10 more rows of sample data to each table. All right, that one took a little while. That's all right. It had quite a bit to generate, but it's gone ahead and generated for me 10 more drivers. And if I look at the other tables, because I did say each table, right? Now I have 10 more trucks with a look up to their proper driver. Awesome. And then I have 10 more. Looks like I don't have 10 more contracts, unfortunately. So yeah, there can be a couple of little hiccups like that. It is still AI, so it can be a little bit unpredictable. That's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and just give it another prompt. All right, add 10 more rows of data to the contract table, easily remedied. All right, so on the data level, you can go ahead and get really, really into the minutia, tell it all sorts of different things, pretty much whatever prompt you could probably give to a human being, it can do here. So let's stop playing around with spreadsheets here and let's see some of the exciting stuff. What kind of app is it going to build with this data set? So I have my contracts, I have my trucks, and I have my drivers for each of these trucks. Let's go ahead and create the app that's gonna allow me to easily access each of these things. So I'm going to hit this save and open app up here. It's going to ask me if I'm done working. I'm going to say yes, save and open app, and it's going to give it just a little bit. All righty, there we go. So if your app is taking a little while to build out, that is perfectly fine. Uh, through the magic of editing, it's probably happened in a couple of seconds here. But uh, it, that did take me just about like five minutes. It could take maybe up to 10, 15, depending on the size of the app, size of the data set, and just your general internet connection. But let's see what just came out of the box here. So here we are in the Canvas app design studio. I'm going to go ahead and just preview the app right out the gate. All right. So it looks like I have a lovely little welcome screen to start off with. There's sort of an empty image here for you to be able to place your own logo if you wish. All right. Awesome that it has that for us there. And then it has a little picture of me. Well, isn't that cute? It shows me whether or not I'm logged in. I'm going to go ahead and let me just check out my trucks, the trucks that I have. So I'm going to click on trucks here. It has all my 15 now rows of data. It shows my truck name, my driver. Notice I didn't really have have anything else inside this data set, but it's got a little display form so that I can see the individual things for each of these uh, trucks here. And if I want to create a new one, I have a button here already. I can hit this plus button and create a new truck, or I can click a truck that already exists and I can edit it. So I'm going to cancel out of this here, click a truck that already exists like truck G and I can edit it and just say like truck uh, go or something like that. And then just accept it. Awesome. And let's say there's a truck I don't like, like the one that I just created truck go. I'm going to delete that and I can delete that record. So if you have worked with canvas apps at all before, you know that right out the gate, unless you 
use some kind of a template, it's going to start off with a completely blank screen. Here, instead of having to search for a template, you just tell Copilot exactly what you want, and it gives you this wonderful starting point for you to be able to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and hit home. I can go to my drivers and do the same thing, see each individual thing. I have a little bit more data for my contract, so maybe that one's going to look a little bit better. There we go. I can see my contracts. It shows me my contract name, start date, my rate, my rate base, which is another column that comes with Dataverse. Now, normally you don't want to show your base column, so maybe that's something that you want to change sort of uh, earlier on. But otherwise, incredible starting point, right? That cut out what this created right here would probably take me about 30 minutes. And if you're not used to Power Apps, probably could take hours, maybe just about hours. So uh, this is an incredible starting point and it doesn't end there. So let me go ahead and note that I can just click this little home button. I'm back on the welcome screen. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of my preview here. All right, I'm getting all sorts of little pop-ups here. There we go. So as you can see over here on the right, Copilot is already asking me here for things that it can help us out with, with this other uh, app here. So if I wanted to, let's say, uh, add a new screen, for instance, all right, I don't know what what I'm going to do with it, but I'm just going to say that I want it. So I'm just going to say, uh, add another screen to this app titled test screen. And there we go. I've got a brand new screen in my application. So even if you didn't want to touch anything in the Canvas app design studio, you can go ahead and just again, have Copilot help you out with individual things. Or if you wanted, you can have Copilot explain some stuff for you in this studio. If there's something, let's say, uh, very in depth or something very complicated that you come across. All right. So let's say I go to this welcome screen, for instance, and uh, I'm just going to find a random control and a random formula for it. All right, so I'm going to click on this image container. Uh, if I click on this little container here, it has the content language property. I'm not sure what these are doing right here. So let me just go ahead and ask Copilot. Copilot is up here right next to your formula bar as well, ready to help out for any kind of power effects questions you might also have. So it is your assistant to help you to build the apps and to help you understand them. So let me just go ahead. Copilot, can you explain this formula for me? All right, this explains assigns an empty string as the value of the content language property if the image contain. All right, awesome, perfect. So as you can see, very, very useful tool. If you decide you've got the Copilot bug now and you want to get a little more into it, you want to be able to have this little virtual assistant here for 24 seven help for whatever project you might be working on, feel free to check out our one of our free ODL courses on Copilot Studio. It will be down in the description below, a link to our ODL courses. It is a free course, free trial. However, if you want to go a little bit more in depth and go into some of our premium courses, let's say you've decided this assistant here is not exactly doing it for you and he's fired. Okay, perfectly fine. We have other courses on building solutions in Dataverse, building out these Dataverse models, building out Canvas apps that uh, allow you to be able to take more control of it yourself as well. But with that said, I have gone ahead and done all the work that I'm going to be doing today. All right, this is perfectly enough for my fake little company here. So that has pretty much solved my issue. With that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for joining me. And I maybe I'll see you all in another video or in our audio classes. Thank you again.